Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday. Hope that you all had a fantastic weekend. Mine was pretty damn good. Got to watch some XFL for the first time. It aired for the uh, the first time yesterday. Actually, pretty good football. I've been waiting for quality spring football, folks, for so long that I can't even begin to explain to you how long I've been waiting for it. So, so far, it looks like the X- the uh, XFL is going to live up to some of the promises that Oliver Luck made. So, should be pretty interesting going forward. And then, of course, UFC was fantastic last night. Got to see uh, John Bones Jones defend his belt in a very, very close decision with uh, Marco Polo Reyes, uh, an up-and-coming prospect who really pushed John Bones Jones to the limit last night. But Bones Jones, hang on, and at the end of the fight, ended up getting his hand raised once again for a record 14 straight times in a title fight, folks. Pretty impressive stuff. All right, I'll uh, stop talking about my silly UFC and (laughs) sports, and we'll get right into the Jeffrey Epstein situation. So, this is an article from a couple of days ago, and I kind of missed it. Well, I, I saw it, but I really didn't, you know, pay too much attention to it. But it's a pretty slow news day this morning, folks, so I figured we'd jump into this story and we'd talk about this a little bit. Maybe give you a a bit of a laugh on a Sunday morning, okay? So, the article is from The Sun, and the headline is, Goodfella Jeffrey Epstein told police a ninja in the mafia with ties to the Gambino crime family was stalking him during his house arrest. I know, sounds like the script to a stupid-ass movie, right? But we're talking about Jeffrey Epstein here, and nothing surprises me at this point. So this article was written by Chris Spargo, and it came out on February 3rd. Like I said, a few days ago, I, uh, I kind of skipped over it. And then this morning, when I was uh, taking a look at the news and trying to decide what article we would read this morning, nothing really jumped out at me. So I figured, you know what, let's go back and let's read this silly-ass article and get a good laugh. Since when do mafioso dresses ninjas that's the question i have for all of you out there so i mean guess what do we have carlo gambino running around in a ninja outfit looking like storm shadow from uh gi joe (laughs) i don't even understand all right so article jeffrey epstein told police that a man dressed in traditional ninja garb was stalking him during his house arrest This man was also in the mafia and had ties to the Gambino crime family, according to Epstein and his lawyer. (laughs) He had ties to the mafia, to the Gambino crime family, according to Epstein and his lawyer. He was in the mafia and had ties. Well, if you were in the mafia, wouldn't that mean that you have ties? (laughs) Oh, boy. Documents obtained by The Sun reveal that Epstein's lawyer shared this information in a letter to the state attorney's office while asking to modify his client's probation. Ah, well, there you go, folks. There was no ninja. There was no mafia guy. There was none of that. All there was was a a want of Jeffrey Epstein to have his probation modified. So, another ruse. Oh, yeah, I'm being stalked by the mafia. A guy dressed as a ninja was outside my window. I need you to fix my probation so that I, this doesn't happen to me. You need to protect me. Absolute joke. And you couldn't come up with a better uh, cover story? Uh, a mafioso dressed as a ninja? I mean, what's next? A cartel member dressed as an Amish person? Give me a break. Jack Goldberger said that Epstein Security intercepted a person who was dressed in black in a black like a ninja and hiding in some bushes. So, black like a ninja or dressed as a ninja? If it was black like a ninja, does that does that infer that he was just wearing black clothing or if he was dressed like a ninja? As in, in traditional garb of a ninja, like he, they said earlier in the article, what well, would that mean the whole the whole get up, right? The whole entire The whole entire thing, the face mask, you know, the the outfit, the throwing stars, the nunchucks, the, you know. (laughs) I mean, honestly, folks, this is ridiculous on its face. A mafioso dressed as a ninja. Okay, file this under the, into the filing cabinet and of, give me a break. The security guards then chase down the man to his car and take down his license details, explained Goldberger. Yeah, so... They chased down a mafioso to his car. Okay, I'm sure that that occurred. I'm sure that this guy was a hardened mafioso. I'm I'm positive 
that this guy was a made man. You know what? He might have even been the godfather of the Gambino crime family, folks. All right? This is serious business. We had a man dressed as a ninja outside of Jeffrey Epstein's house. A search of that info then allegedly revealed that that man was in the mafia and had strong ties to the Gambino crime family. All right, which is it? Strong ties or in the Gambino crime family? And by the way, there aren't that many made men, folks. And furthermore, if you're a made man, you are not skulking in Jeffrey Epstein's bushes dressed as a ninja. Okay, I could say that with a lot of confidence. All right? (laughs) If, If anything, it would have been an associate. Right? A guy that's not a made man, somebody that wants to make his bones, somebody like that, that would be doing something like this. Not a made man, not a capo, not nobody, okay? No, no made mafia member is skulking around in the bushes, folks. It's just not happening, okay? It's just not going to occur. The state's attorney's office sent a measured reply to Goldberger while fuming about the fact that he would even ask to have Epstein's sentence modified in eternal emails. So, the state attorney's office sent a measured reply. Oh, they scolded Goldberger. By the way, this Goldberger is a bad, a bad character in all of this. Every time we hear about Epstein or one of his lawyers making a sweetheart deal or pulling moves, it's, this Goldberger is always right in the thick of things. This guy definitely needs a further look and maybe even a deep dive. We might even have to do a closer look on this clown. In one of these emails, a member of the, of the office states that Epstein got the deal of the century. Yeah, that's an understatement. He got, the deal of the century is obviously an understatement. For what Jeffrey Epstein was accused of and for the time that he did, man, let me tell you, talk about an absolute and utter break. Goldberger was also the man behind the biography of Epstein that was sent to officials during negotiations for that plea deal. We've talked a little bit about this as well. Some of the things that like Elaine Maxwell had to say about Epstein or Eva Dubin or some of these other enablers that not only enabled him before they they quote unquote knew what he was doing, but they enabled him afterwards and they even wrote these letters to try and get him this deal. So... Don't uh, don't ever let any of these people, especially the ones that that wrote these letters, don't ever let them off the hook. That's for sure. Including in that was a testimonial from Ghislaine Maxwell, among others. Oh, Ghislaine Maxwell. What a reprehensible excuse for a human being this lady is, huh? But the one good thing is she's skulking around right now, hopefully in holes somewhere and hiding. And she's not able to be part of society, and rub elbows with all of her other rich, elite, sick, pedophile friends. So that's at least a step in the right direction. But her name literally makes my blood boil. My experience of Jeffrey is of a thoughtful, kind, generous, loving man, with a keen sense of humor and a ready smile, a man of principles and values, and a man of his word, Ghislaine is quoted as saying in a document obtained by the Sun. It makes my skin crawl to read that. To listen to somebody pump this dude's tires like this is just absolutely appalling. But then you look at the source and you realize that Maxwell is just as sick, if not sicker, than Jeffrey Epstein. And you understand that, well, okay, you've got to take it from the, from the source and, and the person who is saying this. And we all know that Ghislaine Maxwell is, is just as bad as Epstein. So, it, it, honestly, it shouldn't be shocking to read this stuff, but... The fact that anybody could even think of Jeffrey Epstein in this sort of positive way just makes my stomach turn. If he made a promise, he would always follow through. In fact, I never saw him break a promise. No, but what you did see him do, and what you helped him do, was break the dreams and aspirations of these survivors. What you did see him do was completely and utterly abuse young women and other women, and you sat there idly by, and you helped, and you were the one who was helping plan all of this, you were procuring all of this, so I don't even want to hear about him breaking a promise, okay? Let's talk about the lives and dreams that he broke. This testimonial was included in a 15-page biography of Epstein that was sent to Alex Acosta, who was the United States Attorney for the Southern District of Florida at the time. He is disciplined in business and and conscientious, said Ghislaine, said Ghislaine at a time when over 40 minors had come forward with allegations of sexual abuse. 
A man always quick to help someone who is down or to offer an opportunity to somebody to pursue a dream or a goal. That's a chilling statement, folks, right? Oh yeah, he's he's always quick to help someone who is down or poor if they let him if, if they let him abuse them or molest them or rape them. Oh, he'll let you pursue a dream, but he'll never let you attain that dream. He'll dangle that carrot in front of you. And then he'll crush those dreams by abusing you and raping you and trafficking you to his friends like Glenn Dubin. The testimonial seemed to work in the end, and Epstein managed to get off with what a member of the state's attorney's office called the deal of the century. Ghislaine was never seen with Epstein after he made his plea deal, but but has remained a fixture on the New York social scene. That all changed in 2015 when she was sued by Virginia Roberts for defamation after denying claims of sexual abuse. And again, folks, here's where we have to give Virginia Roberts a serious nod. Her coming forward in 2015 is what's really getting this house of cards tumbling. This defamation suit, this lawsuit, was a a stroke of genius and brilliance on her and her lawyer's part. Because what it does is it forces this out into the open, and it forces Ghislaine Maxwell to either settle or go through the discovery phase. And it was just a very shrewd part on Virginia Roberts' uh, behalf, and it's very promising to see that her legal team was willing to be, uh, be on the offensive. And I've said that a million times. You have to be on the offensive against people like this. You can't play defense against them. You have to keep going forward at all costs. Bite down on your mouthpiece. You might have to take a few shots to give a few shots, but when you throw those shots, you have to make sure yours land. Twelve years after that case, many of the victims are still seeking closure and have pursued lawsuits against the pedophile who took his own life in August, allegedly. Those women are now getting a helping hand, too, from officials at the island territory where a number of them suffered their alleged abuse. Uh, What? Hold on a minute. Epstein's estate is being sued by multiple women as well as the Virgin Islands, with the latter hoping to seize or force the sale of his two island properties and other holdings in the U.S. territory. All right, let's go back up here a second. Those women are now getting a helping hand, too, from officials at the island territory? No, they're not. It's, it's amazing to me to, un- to see that some of these journalists still don't understand what's going on in the Virgin Islands. It has nothing to do with getting recompense for these, these survivors. It has nothing to do with the survivors getting money. It has to do with Denise George and the Virgin Islands trying to come up on both sides of the table. They're trying to eat at both ends, folks, and that's what that's about. And I wish more people would be hip to that. And I know you folks out there are. I was getting messages from you about this right away about how disingenuous it is, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wish that some of these, uh, these outlets, these, these newspapers and journalists and, you know, digital, uh, digital publications would dig a little more into that and not just accept what Denise George says at its face, because we all know that we can't trust politicians in the best of days. Never mind people from the Virgin Islands right now that were looking the other way while Jeffrey Epstein was getting busy, and then they come out in, in such a righteous manner and act as if what they're doing is for their survivors. It's very transparent, in my opinion, and very, very disingenuous. All right, folks, if you'd like to contact me, you can do that at Bobby Capucci at ProtonMail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at ProtonMail.com. Also, if you would like to help support the podcast and you believe in what we're doing around here, you can click on the GoFundMe link inside of the description box, and that will help us get out to locations like Santa Fe. Uh, I have I have a trip to New York that I'm planning that we're going to do to cover the case a little bit more. You know, there's a lot of things in the works. But first things first is Santa Fe, and that is the 24th. I'm out of here, and I get get into Santa Fe that day, and I hit the ground running. I have some interviews lined up, have some trips lined up. And we'll see what we see, right? We'll shake some trees and we'll see what falls out. All right, everybody. So like I said, later on today, I'm going to be back. And what we're going to do is we're going to read through all, all of Glenn Dubin's financial donations to political campaigns that I could find. There's like 175 of them, folks. So what we'll do is we'll read them and we'll get them out there. We'll get them into the, uh, into the catalog and, you know, we'll go from there, right? All we can do is keep digging for evidence. All we can do is keep sharing it with one another. And all that we can do to make sure that this story doesn't go away is to continue to yell from every single mountaintop until they listen to us. 
All right, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday, and I'll be back a little bit later this afternoon, and we'll read through that list of donors and, of course, the daily drop later on. So we're looking at three episodes today, folks. All right, everybody. I will talk to you later on.